So Brian, a um, couple abstracts at the most recent ASCO suggested that only about you know, 20 to 25 percent of patients benefit from a nivolumab in terms of objective response. But there seems to be a, an extension of survival, or at least in the phase, phase two trial, the randomized phase two. So what are the right endpoints for immune-based therapy? Is it objective response? Is it PFS? Is it survival? And how are we going to compare the results from these checkpoint inhibitors to everything that we've talked about for the past block of time, which are the targeted agents? Yeah, good questions. Obviously, the, the big questions facing the field. I guess I would say, you know, for the nivolumab uh, dose finding phase two, the response rates were in the low 20%. Um, you know, very refractory patient population, and if there was, you know, drug X TKI in that setting, you know, some activity, but not overwhelming. Uh, and, and similarly, PFS was, was quite modest, you know, it was in the three to four month range. So that's, that's, you know, sort of the default for second, third, fourth line kidney cancer. Now, the overall survival reported is, seems long, I guess. We don't want to be too biased, though, by knowing, by the excitement over the drugs. And by that, I mean... Um, you know, there was, no, there was no control arm in that study. And so um, patients who make it to second, third, fourth line kidney cancer do so because they have slow growing disease <laughs> right. or else they wouldn't be here. Right. So you could, you know, I could do a study in eighth line kidney cancer and the survival will be three years because of those patients. So I think we need to be a little cautious about that. Um, having said that, of course, I think the drugs are active, no question. Um, you know, as with IL-2, you know, the overall survival or the tail of the curve really has to be the endpoint. It's not going to be a response rate, number one. The FDA would never go for it, but it just won't be robust enough, at least with single-agent anti-PD-1. PFS, I think, is interesting to look at, and of course we'll look at it, but uh, it doesn't appear, at least from the early clinical data, that that's going to be robust enough to approve a drug, either by the actual data and, of course, depending on what the regulators think of it. So it is overall survival, and that obviously makes it very challenging then, right, because we have a lot of active drugs. We've said, well, we can't show overall survival with TKIs because there's so many active drugs. Yet, if you look at, you know, in prostate cancer with abiraterone or enzalutamide, they've shown overall survival. So I think we've gotten a little bit of a pass in kidney cancer, honestly, with the TKIs because there was, in essence, nothing before this. Um, but I think that's going to change, and I think we need to change our thinking to, to developing that t tail of the curve, to lifting the tail of the curve and designing trials that can show it, even though it may be more difficult. Danny, let's continue on our conversation around some of your, the trials that you're, are taking place in, in Canada, especially recognizing that nivolumab is just one of the agents that are available in this space. Other companies, Merck and, and, and Genentech Roche, uh, what are your experiences, the design of the trials and, and some of the early results that you're seeing that excite you? Certainly. So by far, uh, the most developed compound for the PD-1 space is nivolumab, um, and there are phase one, two, three trials uh, that are ongoing, and some reporting out at ASCO, showing some um, uh, very uh, promising results. Uh, there are also uh, combination studies as well of nivolumab plus ipilimumab, and that's being reported as well. And uh, I think we're all sort of feeling out that space. That next generation immunotherapy is the next thing to look forward to. There are other clinical trials as well, for example, um, uh, AGS003 is a dendritic cell vaccine. It's very personalized therapy and actually in um, a, 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 a higher risk population for metastatic disease, they've actually shown uh, progression-free survivals and overall survivals that push beyond the benchmarks that we're expecting right now. And so, uh, so uh, that dendritic cell vaccine is also um, uh, being studied. Amatix also has a vaccine program. Uh, that's currently being uh, investigated. And of course, uh, there's a cabozantinib, which is an oral MET inhibitor uh, that's being studied for second line metastatic RCC um, uh, uh, versus everolimus. So there are a lot of things that we're looking at now, uh, a lot of different uh, 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 new drugs, and it's very exciting to be an investigator in today's time. So, Brian, 